Last week we started the 12 steps. We're using the tools out of AA's 12 steps and 12 traditions. Um, NA, the basic text, it works how and why in the Bible. And this coming week we're going to talk about step two, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Tim, what does the second step mean to you? I think for me, uh, at least in the beginning, uh, my best understanding of a power greater than myself was just sobering up, just putting down the drink. Um, and it, the way that I understood that it was beyond my comprehension at the time, but working through the rest of the steps, I was able to uh, come to the knowledge and understanding of God and His purpose for me in my life, and understand that uh, He uh, can. He's the only one that can restore me to sanity when I rely on myself. Aaron, what does the second step mean to you? To me, what the second step means is it was finally a chance where I could completely release that burden over to God. I didn't have to hang on to it myself anymore. It was a realization that I didn't have to do it by myself. And it was also a chance that I finally came to that point in my life for something I've been looking for my entire life. And I think both of those went hand in hand. Kevin, what does the second step mean to you? The word insanity stands out to me. And an interpretation as that's used as an expression of the way that, that we think, or that I think. Examples are spending all my money at the bar, knowing that bills want to get paid. But I did it anyway. Um, waking up, telling myself I'd never do that again, and I'd do, this, do it again. And the examples go on and on, um, thinking that I can't get out of this mess. But one thing that helped me is I've seen other people uh, get free from their addiction, and that helped me to kind of start to believe that God can do it for me too. Um, and I've learned that he's not going to do it for me, but he'll do it with me if, if I do the work. So to me, the second step is uh, hope that there is an answer. Melinda, what does the second step mean to you? What the second step meant to me is that it literally came to out of my addiction. When I came into the program six years ago, I didn't believe in God at all. I, if I did, I thought God hated me. Um, but I read We Agnostics in the big book and talked about electricity, and I couldn't deny that power. And that started the wheel turning slowly until two years ago. I accepted God into my heart, and now He restores me daily. But it was a very slow process for me to, to accept that I was not in control, and nor was alcohol in control. Matt, what does the second step mean to you? The second step to me was is just so much bigger than I even realized because it was me letting go and, and admitting that my drinking was just so much bigger than me. It was something that I couldn't control, that I couldn't get grips on. I had to give it to some something, a higher power that was bigger than me that could control the situation and, and bring me back to reality because I really didn't have a grip on reality at the time. And to find, reconnect I guess is a better word, with my higher power Something that I grew up with, but I had lost touch with for so long, was very, very free. Talk about the insanity of your alcoholism. Um, it just it was crazy. It consumed me. It started at 7 a.m. in the morning. It went all day long. Um, I was very much a, a lone drinker. Um, so I, I, I pretty much shut everybody out of my life. Um, it affected my family. It affected my kids. It affected my jobs. Um, it, it, it just basically turned my world upside down. I have a question for all five of you. Has God restored your sanity? Kevin? Yes, absolutely. Um, I don't always see it right away. Um, I think it happens in stages. It's a process. We all want everything to be fixed right away, including myself, and in recovery just doesn't work that way. But I know that if I continue to stay connected and work my program and talk to people about things that are really going on, then I believe that God will continue to work in me and help me be free of my addiction. Has God restored your sanity, Tim? Yes, He has. It's allowed me to be a, a free up and uh, be focused in life. Aaron? Yes, definitely, um, but it is a daily reprieve for me because um, I feel myself sometimes going towards the insanity and 
he, I have to re go reach out to him and he helps bring me back. Melinda? Yes, he does, but it's, it has a short shelf life, so I have to be very active in my program. This week, we'll be talking about the second step. At the end of the meeting, if you do not have a sponsor, we'll have a group of people up front that you can choose from to help you work the 12 steps. It's going to be awesome. As I was um, running around like a complete lunatic today, um, a statement was placed on my heart, and I, and I want to just speak that before I get started. Before I do that, I want to pray. Lord, I thank you for another day above ground and out of prison. Lord, I ask for organization and attention to detail. And I pray that into this place. I pray that people may actually be present and not preoccupied. I pray that you will do things in us that we could not do on our own. I pray that we will have a deeper level of understanding. Lord, I pray that this message that you have put together, Lord, will, will change people's lives, and I hope I'm one of them. So, Lord, I ask that you take all of me and do what you want to do right now. In your name we pray, amen. So the, the statement came to my heart, um, you, have to, you have to know who you are. You have to know who you are so you won't think you're someone that you're not. I'm going to say that again. You have to know who you are so you do not think you're someone that you're not. I want to double click into that here for a second. Some of us think we're better than we are. Some of us think we should get and be paid $20 an hour when we're only worth 10 there's other people that think that they're nothing that are really something. And if you never appreciate who you truly are, you'll never end up being who you're supposed to be. And you cannot be who you were and who you're supposed to be at the same time. A lot of times we think that we are something that we're not. Some of us think that we're losers when we're winners. Some of us think we're too much of winners and we constantly lose. Some of us think that we're worth something more than that. I know my old boss is here tonight. Now he watched this program get birthed. He watched me travel the country with him and take phone calls up till four in the morning. He said, I don't know how you do it when Trinity Village started. Now he's a successful man. But I didn't go to him and say that I'm just all that in a bag of chips. I'm a liability in the flesh. Because when you hire me, there's a chance I won't show up in the morning if I decide to get high. So maybe I thought I was a $20 an hour guy when I was really an $8, $8 an hour guy. And maybe I might have made 20 at one day, time in my life. But that time was over when I decided to drink. So you better know who you are so you don't think you're something that you're not. What do you got that you do not have? What has God promised you that you're not walking in? Does it take a level of humility as God elevates you and you get your family back, get your money back, get your house back, get your trust back, can you stay humble? The Bible says that those who humble themselves will be exalted. But those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Now, when, I, when God's got to humble me, it's not just about being humbled. It usually ends up being extremely humiliated. We had 140 men here from Team Challenge. We treated like them the kings that they are because we want to show them that we love you in spite of you. But anything worth something costs something. Sobriety doesn't go on sale. Freedom does not go on sale. You're going to have to pay for every penny of it. Your kids are going to have to pay, just like Sue said. Your kids are going to have to pay just as much as they, almost as much as they had to pay in their addiction because you're not going to be around them all the time. You're going to have to go to meetings. 
You're going to have to meet with your sponsors. You're going to have to say no. What do you got that you do not have? I had a guy, I posted that out after a men's conference. He says, well, that's not even good grammar. I said, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> People are more concerned with grammar than freedom. I never quite could understand a perfectionist. They won't do anything if, if, unless it's perfect. That's not a perfectionist. That's called laziness. Because none of us are perfect. The program teaches us that this is progress, not perfection. As long as I'm making progress and I'm practicing these principles in all my affairs, I can't be different at work than I am in my, in my home and be different in my home than I am around the boys or be different around the boys than I am around. Practice, practice these principles in all your affairs. Last week we talked about the first step. The first word of the first step says we. See, I needed somebody to help me admit that I'm powerless. Because I was still drinking. Still using See, see, the judge told me I was powerless. My wife at the time told me I was powerless and my life was unmanageable. My, my kids, who were babies at the time, they didn't know any different. They just knew something was wrong. It don't matter how old your kids are. They know when something's wrong and something's right. There's something called tension that one can pick up on. I'm here to tell you that God's promises are true. I got one daughter that's a nurse. I got another daughter that's going into her second year of college. And I got a son that's 18 that's a, a Bible camp counselor right now that left the day after his graduation because you taught him how to work. It takes a village to raise a child. And when I got here, I was a grown man with little boy issues. Still is easily offended. See, the 12 steps are so important. The 12 steps are the 12 steps of freedom. I don't like it when I hear church people say they don't need AA, and I don't like it when I hear AA people say they don't need church, because it's all the same. Okay. AA is birthed out of spiritual principles. And then church people don't want to go to an AA meeting because the guy or gal sitting next to them doesn't believe in God. They believe in the light as their higher power. Well, to me, my mind tells me what a fertile ministry opportunity this is. This person is seeking God, and they think it's the light. The greatest scripture you can ever quote is your life. People don't care what you say. They watch what you do. My buddy, who's been in prison the majority of his adult life, he said, damn what they say. Watch what they do, and you'll know who they are. We're all good talkers. We know that actions speak louder than words. You know, and, and, and the thing is that, 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 that we know what the Bible says. It says the Bible says those who are faithful in the little things. The problem that I had is when God started to elevate me in business or whatever else, I, didn't, I wasn't faithful in the little things. I was so stressed out about the big things. Well, why do you want the big things if you can't even handle it? If you can't pass the test, you're not going to be able to manage the, the blessing. If you don't pass the test, you're not going to um, pass the testimony. I saw a guy I hadn't seen for 10, 20 years walk in the door tonight. God brought him back to the same test. The test is called freedom. I've failed it so many times, and I never, I said, well, I know this test. No, I didn't, because I never read it. I just answered it. Too many of us talk before we listen. God will bring you back to jail. God will bring you back to treatment. God will bring you back to AA, because that's your test. So tonight, since you're here, you might as well take it. God is so gracious, you might fail it again. I might fail it again. You will never hear me say I'll stay sober the rest of my life. If I turn, take the wrong turn out of this parking lot, there's a chance I'll be in a dope house in five minutes. I know that part of me. That's my flesh. I know I'm capable of drinking, drugging again. I know that I'm capable of leaving my wife. I know that about me. See, if you don't get to know yourself, you won't see yourself coming. Say, Freddie ain't, dead. Freddie ain't dead. Freddie's still alive. We might not see him in you right now. But when Freddie rooms his little head up, you better know it's Freddie. See, I love the second step because the second step says, um, we came to believe. That I, I've been taught in the rooms that that's a three-part. First, got to show up. We came. 
You got to show up. If you ain't going to show up, it ain't going to work. So first we come. After we come and came to, we come to. The fog lifts us. I'm detoxing. Um, I'm in a fog. My, my, the benzos I used to take, they told me that'd be the hardest thing to deal with. I thought opiates would be because those benzos messed me up for like six months in my early recovery. Because I was so stressed out I needed value. Took six months to come to. Feel normal again when you do dope like I do it. And then I came to believe because I saw God working in you. God always answers a problem with a person. You want God to show up? God will send somebody to you. The problem is, the devil will trip you up about that person. You'll get offended by what they say. Why wouldn't the devil do that? The devil don't want you next to the person that God has sent to save you. So whoever you're mad at tonight might be the very person God has selected to save you. You got, you got to be smarter than the game. The, the, the Bible calls the devil an evil genius. So you're not just against some chump here. The devil has studied you since you were born. He knows your moves before you make them. See, I don't like to get punked anymore. I've been punked too much. And a lot of it was self-inflicted. You got to know the devil's game. He'll entice you to do something. And after you do it, He'll make you feel bad about it. He'll, he'll condemn you for doing it. If you're, if you're condemned and full of guilt and shame tonight, that ain't God. That ain't God. God says if anyone lacks wisdom, they should just ask him. And he will give it to you generously without finding fault. God ain't like our parents or like me. God doesn't say, I told you so. You should have known better by now. God is just grateful that you ask. And he says he'll give it to you generously. He's not, God's not going to hold back. Oh, oh my, there's Jeff again in treatment. <laughs> I told him on the eighth time, if he don't get this right. But the challenge is you never know when your grace runs out. You never know when your hit may be your last hit. You never know when the drink may be the last drink. See, see, see I love the 12 steps, and, and, I, and I'm teaching them. For my own benefit and your benefit because it says, see, it took me six months to come to. I came to believe. My belief started because I saw you. Hebrews 12 says, since you are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. See, I'm grateful for the cloud of witnesses that are in AA that taught me how to believe. They taught me how to believe and I saw the God in you. So we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves. I think crack was a power greater than myself. It took my kids, it took my money, it took my integrity, whatever, whatever it is for you, that's bigger than you. Addiction is bigger than you. So you need something to conquer addiction that's bigger than you. You can't expect something that pulled me and you down to the ground and think your willpower is going to get you back up. Came to believe that a power, say power, power. greater than yourself could restore you to sanity. Could research. See, God will not do it for you. He will only do it with you. I'm insane. See, too many of us mistake this step of getting our outside world straightened out. My problem was I was running the streets or I was spending all my money or I wasn't sleeping or I wasn't eating and I never showed up. I got, that was my insanity. You know, the insanity that needs to be restored is in between our two ears. If this is restored, this automatically is restored. But tonight, too many of us are trying to restore this sanity. Well, this is still insane. And after you build this, it will bury you. What I was building buried me. Because I thought the insanity was that I wasn't showing up for work or spending all my money or ended up in jail or, or leaving my kids or getting divorced. That, that was insane, but the insanity was in my mind. So it says now in AA 12 and 12, you have convinced us that we were alcoholics. I needed some convincing. Now, again, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. One would think I'm dry heaving. I'm, uh, as I ended the meeting last week, I'm insane. 
Let's get this drink to my lips because I'm sane. Let's get this pipe to my mouth because I'm sane. This syringe to my arm because I'm sane. I'm sane. This is going to make me sane. I left my kids because the dope's more important because I'm sane. What's it going to take to convince you that you're insane? Why would you buy something that's killing you? Would you go to North Memorial after the meeting and say, Nurse, I'm here to buy cancer. And while you're getting cancer off the shelf, give me some of that diabetes. You wouldn't. Check it out. Check it out. You have convinced me. I needed somebody to convince me. I mean, they tried for years. That's why I had to go through life. That our lives are unmanageable. Oh, I can't go to treatment because I got to work. Even though I haven't been to work for two weeks. I, I can't go to treatment because I got to go see my kids' ball game. And even though I haven't been there one time. And when I did show up, I was dry heaving and shaking and 30 pounds underweight. But no, I can't go to treatment because I got miss his game. It's a lie. It's a lie. Having reduced us down to the state of absolute helplessness, I was reduced. Addiction reduced me down to nothing. But 30 days sober now, I forgot all about that. I didn't forget about Gina when I, when I let go of that dub. Reduces us down to absolute helplessness. You now declare that not, none but a higher power can remove the obsession. I never thought I would live a day without an opiate or a benzo or cocaine or alcohol. I couldn't see myself living that. I could, there's no way I can live a day without that. That obsession. That obsession. When I was at work, I thought of drugs. When, when, when I was home with my kids as babies, I thought of the drugs. See, I'm the type of junkie that they talk about here. And so are you. I'll never forget when I'm playing with the toys and my kids were babies and, 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 and I was physically there, but I was emotionally in my addiction and I was in the bathroom snorting coke and doing this and pretty soon I was living on the streets and I wished I was at the living room floor with my kids. Wherever I go, there I was. The obsession... I, I never thought I'd live a day without that obsession. I've been sober before, but I still had that obsession. I had that. See, there's a difference between being free and free indeed. I'll give you an example. If some of you are wanted by the law tonight on a warrant, which some of you are, and I love you, I can relate. You're free, but you've got to go to bed every night wondering when they're coming. When you're free indeed, you can sleep like a baby. Because there ain't nobody looking for you. Check this out. Check this out. This information can turn into revelation, which will lead to transformation. Some of us won't believe in God. I won't do it. I won't do it. God's failed me. Because here's the thing, guys. This isn't that. Whoever they were that tried to get you to church or brought you to church that taught... That, that, that acted totally different out to church. They, they put on their church face, and when they got home, they were a whole different face. And you said, I don't want nothing to do with that God that they're talking about because you aren't the same person you are in front of church people than you are in me. So I don't want nothing to do with God. This isn't that. That is over with. Check this out. Others can't. No matter how hard I try, I can't believe in God. I, I don't know what it is. I just can't believe in God. Does anybody have a hard time with that right now? I'm asking for 100% honesty. Raise your hand. Raise them high because you are champions. Right now I want you to repeat after me. Because the Bible says that God is the one who gives you the faith. Say, God, please give me faith. You watch now. You watch. Still others who do believe in God, that God exists, have no faith whatsoever. He will perform a miracle. God's given up on me. Been to treatment 11 times. He won't work with me anymore. It's, the, it's a lie from the pit of hell. It says sometimes AA comes harder to those who have lost or rejected faith than to those who never had faith at all. 
See, uh, if it comes too quick, you won't appreciate it. These praise God, hallelujah people just right out of the crack house, I get real skeptical of them. <laughs> Check it out. It's, it's what the book says. But I like people that are unsure about their faith. I love loving those people. Check out what it says. They have tried the way of faith and the way of no faith. Trying and working it are totally two different things. It says, now let's take the guy or gal full of faith, but still reeking of alcohol. He believes he's devout, his religious observant. He's sure he still believes in God, but suspects that God doesn't believe in him. He takes pledges and more pledges. Following each, he not only drinks again, but acts worse than the last time. What do they tell us? You pick up where you left off and worse. Is that true? Yes. He tries to fight alcohol and pour in God's help, but when the help doesn't come, what then can be the matter? The Bible says that faith without works is dead. We know that service is a critical component of anybody's freedom walk. It says, there are too many of us who have been just like him. They have and have found the riddle's answers. This answer has to do with the quality of faith, not the quantity. Isn't it something that I did in 1990 and still relapsed? I was, I was after the qu quantity. You know, her and I don't get a lot of time together, but when we do, it is quality. Matt doesn't see his kids all the time, but when he does, it is quality. I'll take uh, quality over quantity. I'll be home every night at 5 o'clock and sit there and have dinner with my family and, and not help, but we sit there and look at each other and we don't know what to say. That's quantity. Check out what it says. It's, it says, this has been our blind spot. We were supposed we had a humility when we really had... See, some of us think we have humility when we really don't have it. We suppose we had been serious about religious practices when, upon honest appraisal, we found we have been superficial, telling people what they want to hear. See, it's easy to obey when you have to. It's easy to give God everything when you got nothing. But what do you do when he starts to bless you? Therefore, step two is a rallying point for all of us. Whether agnostic or atheist, a former believer, we can stand together. And say, I, I, I go to Super America at the end of my day to fill my, whatever you call that thing, of Diet Coke. And, um, and there's a guy, and I come in and I'm saying, praise God, you know, hey, how was your day? It was great, blah, 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 blah. And he says, you know, he, goes, he said, said something about Jesus. Here's one thing I want to tell you about Jesus. Go to your meetings this week and say Buddha, and no one will blink an eye. Say Allah, whatever. Say Jesus, the whole room gets offended. That name carries power. And like I'll say all the time, if you really know Jesus, he is the most chill, loving, cool dude you'll ever meet. But, but, but this guy just took it upon himself. He knows I'm a pastor because some of our guys have worked there. He goes, you're a pastor, right? He goes, you know I'm an atheist, right? I said, well, you're an atheist? I said, I love you, brother. I said, if you're an atheist, that tells me that you're a strongly convicted man. You have high convictions. If you just see, I wish people would that believe in Jesus would be as bold as the atheists were. <laughs> he had to make sure I knew he was atheist, and I said to him this: I said, Well, I love you, man. I, I, re I respect your level of conviction. What do you want me to say? You're going to hell? But what I did say to him is this: what if you're wrong? Because if I'm wrong about Jesus, what's going to happen? But if he's wrong about Jesus, something's going to happen at the end of his life. <laughs> True humility is an open mind that can lead us to faith. Every AA meeting is an assurance that God will restore us to sanity because he got proof all around you. Rightly relate ourselves to him, the NA basic text. The first step has left a vacuum in our lives. See, what, what if there was just one step? I admitted I was powerless in my life would be, then what do I do? But some of us never work beyond the one step. So I'm just powerless and miserable and my life's over and I'm unmanageable? That's how I got to live my life for the rest? No, there's more steps after this, but none of us ever work it. It says, we need to find something to fill that void. 
See, see, this is the purpose of the second step. Some of us didn't take this step seriously at first. We passed over it with a minimum amount of concern, only to find the next step would not work. It won't work. The third step won't work without the second step. You know my story? I skipped around steps. And I love it when they told me about step 13. <laughs> Never read it in a book, but that's the one I believed in the most. <laughs> Why do I believe the lie versus the truth? See, it's, it's, it's so simple, it's complicated. They say it's a simple program for complicated people. It says, even when we admitted that we needed help, we, I said it earlier, God answers a problem with a person. I, I need help. I need help with this, with our drug problem. Many of us would not admit that we need faith or sanity. We have a disease, progressive, incurable, and fatal. You know how I feel about that? I've been asked to do radio shows on that. Pastor Jeff, do you believe it's a disease or sin? I said, I don't care. It will kill me. See, too many of us are fighting battles about grammar. We're, we're, we're taking swings at things that don't matter. Insanity is repeating, repeating the same mistakes and expecting different results. See, if you're working your program the same way you worked it before, that's insane. If you're doing the same things you did before you relapsed, and you're still doing them, and thinking it's going to be enough, it isn't going to work. It says the most obvious insanity of the disease of addiction is the obsession to use drugs. Ask yourself this question. Do you believe it would be insane to walk up to someone and say, may I please have a heart attack? or get in a fatal accident. If you can agree this would be an insane thing, you should have no problem with the second step. In this program, the first thing we do is stop using drugs. This won't work unless you stop using, and stop drinking, and stop going to the casino, and stop looking at pornography. It won't work, because you're still captive. It says, at this point, we begin to feel the pain of living without drugs or anything to replace. What are you trying to replace your drugs with? We read last week in the AA's book, it says, even though you're not drinking, the symptoms of the addiction can return. Angry, irritable. That's the why behind the what. See, we try to replace things and fill that void. That, that's the God hole in us. The pain forces us to seek a power greater than ourselves that can relieve the obsession to use. See, what, what we're called to do in this step is you can't find natural relief to a spiritual problem. Your girlfriend ain't going to fix it. Your bank account ain't going to fix it. You thought the drugs would fix it. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing that will, that will relieve. See, we're used to looking for natural things to relieve us. But it's a spiritual thing. We saw that other people recovering. I mean, if they can do it, you can do it. That's a cloud of witnesses in Hebrews 12. And they told us it was working for them, but we're secret agents. How is it working for you? We always think something isn't what it looks like. How many people have been sober over your raise your hand? It's working for them. So why can't it work for you? Check it out. It says we began to see evidence, proof, that a power could, that you cannot even fully explain. How can you explain a power that takes a crackhead loser like me, restores my family, restores my private business life, makes me a pastor of a church and a founder of a very large... That don't make no sense, so quit trying to figure it out. Just look at the evidence. Look at the evidence that, that's around us. Check this out. We can use this power long before we can understand it. As we see, as we see coincidence and miracles happening in our lives, check this, this is so profound. Acceptance becomes trust. If you can't trust, it's because you have a hard time accepting things. If you learn how to accept things, you will learn how to trust. And the reason why all of us have trust issues, it's not that I don't trust Steve or Clay. The honest to God truth is I don't trust myself. So then I think she's cheating on me when I'm cheating on her. But I'm all suspicious of her because I got a backdoor life going down. It's quiet in here now. You got to get to know yourself so you can see yourself coming. 
Is there a side of me that's capable of cheating on her? Absolutely. Using drugs? Absolutely. You better know yourself. You better know yourself, and whatever side of you you feed wins. As we see coincidences and miracles happening, it says, check this out, the strength to move into action comes from the belief. We need to accept the step and start on our road. See, I thought I started on my reco- road to recovery on the first step. That's not what that just said. So maybe why I had to go through 11 treatments is that I truly never started on my road to recovery because I truly never worked the second step. When our belief has grown, it can grow. There's no limits with God. We are ready for step three. N.A., it works how and why. Our surrender in the first step leaves a deep need to believe that we can recover. I'm here to tell you, if I can do it, you can do it. The surrender makes it possible to feel hope. By admitting our own powerlessness, we open our minds to an entirely new idea. The only thing that's wrong with being wrong is if you think you're right. See, I had, to, I had to open my mind to a possibly a new idea. The possibility that something greater than ourselves might have, be powerful enough to relieve. Again, I'm looking for Nat. I, I, want, I want to buy relief. I want to shoot relief. I want to snort relief. I want to drink relief. I want to put relief on the blackjack table. I want to look at relief on my smartphone with the pornography. That is not relief. You don't spell relief P-O-R-N. Too many of us are going with that false sense of relief. Look at the face after, t- after you get done. Look at how intelligent you look. <laughs> I tell the truth. Don't get a, don't like you have never heard that before. Please. Check out what it says. I, I, it says, this doesn't mean unfailingly honest. You're not going to be perfect. I'm not going to be perfect. I remember white lies coming off my tongue. I'm like, why did I just lie about that? I didn't have to lie about that, but I just lied about it. But it says unfailing. Just because we fail in, 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 in our steps doesn't mean that we're a failure. We just have to try our best to practice these principles. As we first approach step two, we can practice the principle of honesty. I had to practice being honest. A says rigorous honesty. And who do you have to be honest with? Yourself. You use, you die. We just released doves in memory of somebody that died. But I was so sick, it didn't matter. I thought when my kids were born, I'd quit using. No, I used more. I thought when I got in legal, financial, and health problems, I quit. I, I, I used more. Check out what it says here. It's so important to, to grasp this and acknowledging and sharing what we do or don't believe. Don't be ashamed if you don't believe in God. I was in a conversation today, and a gentleman asked the guy, if I was to pick up your phone, what would I see on your phone? Now, he didn't even know the guy. And what the guy told the guy, you would see porn, honestly. What if somebody asked you a question like that? Honesty is everything. And I had to practice being honest. Developing our open mind is, see, I had, to, I had to get my mind developed to be open. Takes some effort. That's where we fail. We don't want to work it. Just give me an open mind, God. God will not do it for you, but he'll do it with you. But we practice the principles of listening. I had to practice listening to other recovering addicts, share how they came to believe. For many of us, the willingness to try something new, since you're here, you might as well give it a try, at least for a month, and see what happens. About simply because we are so tired of our old ways. A tradition is another definition of frozen success. You grew up at traditional churches and different meetings. It's a, it's a frozen success. God ain't doing what he once was in certain things. He's still the same God. But the way I reached you six years ago has changed. You want to reach your children? You want to go through tradition is frozen success. Check this out. Check this out. I need to be sharpened. However, we have found an open mind indispensable when we approach this step. If we looked around us, we find many reasons to believe. Our belief may simply be that we can, check this out, we can recover from a life of addiction. Too many of us are just trying to recover from alcohol. It's the life of alcohol. 
It's the isms. It's the patterns of behavior. It's the routines. My friend said he drank every night on his way home from work. I said, we have to change that routine. We have to, we have to fill that void of that drive. See, 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 and I, I wasn't, how can you be addicted to smoking soap? Or crawling around the floor looking for sheetrock? I was addicted to the F it life, the forget it life. I didn't want to be accountable to nobody. I wanted to do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. However, we have found that open-mindedness is initially being restored to sanity means that we no longer have to use drugs. We go to meetings meetings rather than isolating. We have to quit putting walls around us and wondering why no one's paying attention to us. You're in a room of 250 people right now. We do love you if you let, we love you if you don't let us in, and we love you if you do let us in, but you're not alone anymore. You're not alone. It says, we call our sponsor rather than sitting alone in our painful feelings. We ask for our sponsor's guidance in working the steps in the real demonstration of sanity. Your sponsor doesn't have to help you. I don't have to teach this lesson. I do it because someone did it for me. And I can't keep what I have unless I give it away. Check out what it says here. It's so important to grasp. We begin to believe that a powerful force can restore us to sanity. At long last, we feel hope for ourselves. We came to believe implies a process. For some, this pr process is simple and may bring immediate results. I get nervous when I see people getting blessed too soon. If it comes too quick, you may not appreciate it. I was the start over king. I know how to start over blindfolded. I just didn't know how to stay. I knew how to get sober. I didn't know how to stay sober. So, so some of us got to quit rebuilding and begin to build. Belief in a power greater than yourself is easily, is, does not come easily to all of us. This is, it, nothing good is easy. However, we found that an open mind is indispensable, not the first time you've heard that, when we approach a step. If we look around us, we find many reasons to believe. I just gave you two examples of people that raised their hands. For many of us, faith can be described as a belief in something intangible. After all, we can logically explain that the sudden lifting of the... I, I am amazed that that obsession has been lifted. Yet this has happened for many of us. We can't, and God isn't going to lose his reputation over you. If he relieves the obsession for me, he can do it for you. It says, we come from various walks of life and experience. So it is natural that we bring with us differing concepts of spirituality. Our humility and open-mindedness make us teachable. We've got to remain teachable. We allow others to share what has worked for them. You're not allowing others to share what has worked for them with a closed mind. This step, step takes humility. We must let go of our fears and how we may appear to others. It's none of your business what other people think of you. It's none of your business what other people think. You really start walking with God, you're going to have a hundred more haters than you have today. And if you're not doing nothing, they got nothing to talk about. But as soon as you start doing something, they start talking. Let them talk. Because if you know who you are, it doesn't matter. But it says sanity often means that we don't act on the first impulse. If I act on my first impulses, I'd be in jail. I heard it in an NA conference in St. Cloud about 10 years ago. My first thought is always wrong. Never go with your first thought. Being open-minded, we've opened ourselves to new ideas. We stepped away from the problem and towards... Don't, don't envy and hate on people that are more blessed than you. Glean up to them. Learn from them. Study them. Watch them. If you want what they have, do what they do. And there are no shortcuts in this thing. Shortcuts are nothing but setbacks. If you want what they have, do what you do. Trust me, you don't want what I have. Sue taught me that three years ago. If all of us put our problems in a pot tonight and stirred up all these 250 problems, and you found out what my problems were, you take your problems back. It says this solution, evidence, there's so much evidence in this room, open-mindedness and willingness to believe a power greater than ourselves. We must now go on to step three to develop a relationship with God, our under verse 8. This isn't about religion, people. 
um, religion is for people that are afraid of hell. Spirituality is for people that have been there. I've been to hell on earth. This is about a relationship. So I told you in the video what we're going to do as we close here. It says now in Mark 9, it says, if, if I can do it, you can do it. God will take the sickest of the sick and turn their lives around. Jesus, check this out. Jesus said to the Father, you said, if you can, there are, look around the room. If that whack job can do it, you can do it. If that chronic alcoholic can do it, that addict, that porn freak, that sex addict, that gambling fiend can do it, you can do it. My spiritual daughter is here. She just got out of federal prison. It was nothing nice, but we hung in there with her. Let me tell you, she's doing the deal now. She ain't looking back. Your past no longer defines your future. Your history with, with your addiction, when you're walking with God, can't touch your destiny. I didn't get what was coming to me. God is good. All things are possible for those, the one who believes. With God, all your impossibilities become possible. Immediately, check this out. Immediately the father cried out, I do believe. Help me to believe more. We need help from the people that have gone before us to help us believe more. If you are willing to sponsor someone tonight, I want you to come to this stage right now. I'm eliminating all excuses that you don't have a sponsor. If you are ready to sponsor somebody, tonight is your night. I need more women. Jamie has post-its. If you need a sponsor, I want you to walk to the stage and the post-its, they will give you their name and phone number and then it's on you. Let me look at the stage for a second. Ladies on the left side. No, we, we go women with women. Don't get any bright ideas. <laughs> Any of these people are willing to sponsor. I could go face this little, this, this, this one here. You. How long have you been sober? Almost three years. She sat in my living room with my wife and I. She went to school with my daughter. Almost three years ago as a scared little girl. She asked me to marry her in Colorado. My wife and I flew out there and I married a woman of God. To another man of God. That's what God can do. Let's give him a hand. So if you are looking for a sponsor to change sponsors, to have a sponsor, it's on you to go to that stage. I've done my part. As we close, it says, John 12, it's time to come out of the darkness. I have come as a light to shine in the dark world so that he who puts their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. God will put light on that depression. He'll put light on that lust. Light on that fear. Light on that addiction. God will put light on that unforgiveness. God will put light on that low self-worth. God will put light on that obsession. These people will help you shine the light on what is dark in your lives. God bless you.